Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jack and I am yet another Let's Player here on YouTube. And we are back with the third installment of my personal Sonic the Hedgehog retrospective with Sonic Colors for the Nintendo Wii. That's Sonic Colors with a U. This isn't Sonic Colors as some of you may know it. No, this is, this is actually spelt correctly. Uh, so this was released in 2010 for the Nintendo Wii. There's a DS version as well. And this is pretty much the start of a Sonic Renaissance. A short but sweet Sonic Renaissance. That brought Sonic back into the positive spotlight. <laughs> Sega! Oh, th this title screen. This title screen, it looks great, it sounds great. Oh my god, Sonic Colors has an amazing soundtrack. Not, not my favourite, but, you know, it's a Sonic game. When the music is good, it's really, really good. Which is pretty much all but three games or something like that. Uh, oh, what is this? Not a single cutscene, no story, nothing. We are thrown right into the action. Welcome to Sonic Colors, ladies and gentlemen. Specifically, Tropical Resort. Yeah, I decided to turn uh, the navigator on, so Tails will be giving us instructions that I will mostly be ignoring. That makes me wonder why I turned it on. Maybe I just did it to showcase it and then I didn't bother turning it off. I'll be sure to do that when I return to the game next time. After the, after the next part. Alright, so Sonic Colors is pretty much nothing but unleash daytime stages, only with a bit more emphasis on platforming. We're still running around with, at the speed of sound, we still have the boost of the homing attack, which unlike Unleashed HD, which is the what version this one is following, the homing attack is on the jump button, so there's no wait reason to accidentally boost unless you're like me. Where uh, I, I decided to play this with a classic controller. You can play this game with a classic controller, a GameCube controller. I can't do that because it's on the Wii U. Uh, the Wii Remote by itself. Don't know why you would do that. Or with the Wii Remote Nunchuck, which is generally how I played it. So the button layouts were confusing me. It's like A is jump, B is boost, which that, that seems backwards to me. And I really wish I didn't jump over that speed power. <laughs> I swear Sonic Colors is a faster game than this. Sometimes. Sometimes it's a faster game than that. Other times that is pretty much about as fast as you'll be going. Also, Sonic Colors, let's face it, we've all heard this. It's very much a 2D game. Tropical Resort has probably got about half the 3D stuff in the entire game. Now, that's an exaggeration. It, but it does have... This Tropical Resort is easily the, the stage that has the most 3D in it. I think if you run into that capsule fast enough, you can break it without the need to jump into it, but I didn't manage that. And my final rank is... B! No, we can't get S ranks yet. Not yet. We have, we've yet to be, in be introduced to the, the gimmick of this game. Which we won't be seeing for until later on in this part. Yeah, you can actually move Sonic around on the results screen. You can smash that results screen apart. I didn't find it there, but you can find an extra life in one of those numbers. 
Got not even a first axe. We we even get a second axe before we get any sort of story set. And that actually kind of bothers me. I don't know why. I feel like if you're going to do it, have the cutscene after the first act. It just seems weird having it after the second one. Yeah, again, we're just thrown straight into the action. Topical Resort Act 2. Complete with its own musical track. Each area consists of uh, yeah, six acts and a boss fight, with a musical track used twice in each one. Uh, some acts are just repeats of areas you've already gone through, but the layout has been altered. You might be using different wisps. You might be using the same wisps. Uh, sometimes it might be going a bit slower, there's a new gimmick added, all that sort of stuff, and typically they're shortened areas of places you've already visited. Uh, th this one is a, is a completely different act, though occasionally they may blend together, let's face it, we just went through that same corkscrew again. So you're seeing all of these empty capsules, these ones are yellow, we've had a few cyan ones, we're not going to be getting them for a while. The cyan one we'll be getting soon, but not the yellow one. What I just collected there, that was a red ring. There are 180 red rings in this game. I can't collect them all yet. Not until we have collect we have unlocked all of the wisps. So I'll be picking a few up here and there, but for the most part, I have to let that robot die. For the most part, uh, throughout this throughout this part of the playthrough, I'm not really going to be collecting red rings. Then we even have animal capsules return. Sometimes, some stages it's it, it's the wisp capsule. Some stages it's the gold ring. I don't know why. The DS version is a bit more even with it, but for the Wii version, sometimes it's a capsule, sometimes it's a gold ring. But there's our extra life. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you only have so long though <laughs> before Sonic stops. Welcome to a Mount Incredible Interstellar Amusement Park, where you can enjoy five planets for the price of one. He loves to hear his own lips flap, but I gotta hand it to the eggster. This place is epic. Everyone and their brother is going to want to come here. No doubt. But now I'm not sure why we're here. This place looks totally harmless. Because Eggman plus secretly built amusement park equals evil plot for us to foil. Lucky for us, he's not very good at keeping things hidden. True. It would be pretty hard to miss a giant floating space amusement park surrounded by planets. Still, an evil plot? I don't know. Wow! Plot or not, you can't be mad at this view. This place has taken beauty to the next level. I'm just surprised that it was so easy to sneak in here. Uh, I wouldn't say it was that easy. Hello, happy people! Buckle up as Eggman's ultra-accelerating space elevator whisks you to an interplanetary wonderland of fun! I can't believe somebody was dumb enough to leave the keys in this thing. It's like Eggman's begging us to sneak in and trash the place. Man, this thing's got crazy fast acceleration. <laughs> you call this fast? This amusement park has been constructed entirely out of a sense of remorse for my past transgressions and is in no way associated with any sort of evil plot or premeditated misdeeds. Well, that's a relief. about it makes my head feel like it wants to. Huh? Oh, Your voice chip is stuck on cowboy again. Stop talking and let those aliens. I'm not sure what's going on. But I'm sure of what I'm gonna do. Huh? Hey, what's going on? Huh? Whoa! And now we finally have a bit of story. And yeah, when you uh, begin a new profile, it will automatically give you the name of a certain Sonic character. Including Big. Luckily, it gave me Shadow, and you know what? I like Shadow. I hate his game, but I like Shadow. So, you know, we're going to stick with that. And you can also select one of the characters you want your me, you might have. 
I have a bunch, of, just a few me's I have there. I don't know why I have Mario, I don't remember making him, but uh, you know, Sonic, Tails, Yakker, or Bottom Cuba, but of course, I had to go with the greatest of Sonic characters, Dr. Eggman. Next up, the tropical resort. There, you'll find breathtaking views from our giant service wheels, amazing views of the shopping malls, and constant raising of bodily harm. Oh, those PA announcements. I'll get more into that in a minute. I should just point out, though, that Tropical Resort was clearly on the underside of the amusement park during that cutscene. So, every single thing we're doing here, we are actually running upside down. I really should be seeing the planet right as right as we're running along. Unless I'm right on the edge of it. Alright, quick stepping. It's a bit more awkward to do in this game compared to Unleashed and Generations. Because, well, since we're playing on the Wii, we don't have as many buttons to work with. Yeah, if it, unless you're playing with a classical GameCube controller, but they had to make it work for everything. So, quick stepping is just done by tapping left and right, which is kind of awkward to do when you're also trying to move forward at the same time. Oh, and we press the X button to uh, slide. We don't have the crawl ability anymore, which if, you, if you're simply crouching in place and you start moving whilst crouching, or just automatically slide. There's no crawl anymore. Alright, so what I just grabbed there was our first wisp. The first of uh, seven wisps, I think. And technically our sixth. Te ugh, technically our second wisp. We have the white wisps, which are just given to us with no introduction whatsoever. They're simply there for the sake of a boost, and I really should have used the laser right here. I don't know why I didn't. Until, until after the robots, but anyway. That's a laser. So the cyan wisp will turn Sonic into the cyan laser form. What that does is it send Sonic really fast, faster than you could normally go, in a straight line. When you first activate it, you will have a few seconds to determine the direction. Exactly how many seconds you get seems to depend on what level you're in. Sometimes it'll be almost instantly, sometimes you have plenty of time. And if it hits a wall, it will ricochet off of it. You can find these crystals or specialized crates that you will ricochet off of that will send you in specific directions. Or you could simply just plow through enemies with it. And it's super, super fast. And for every wisp that you use, an announcer, I think it's Sonic's new voice actor, Roger Craig Smith, he will yell out the name of the wisp. So in this case, he'll go, LASER! There are a number of wisps in this game. You have, In addition to the white boost, you have the cyan laser, the yellow drill, the orange rocket, the pink spikes, the blue cube, the green hover and the purple frenzy. The DS version has two exclusive wisps as well and they would pretty much become a staple in the series after this for no explained reason whatsoever, so sort of completely goes against the ending to this game. And the laser can also go through these power lines like that. Just It doesn't really do anything apart from getting you somewhere. If you ricochet off of the uh, crystals you get points. Uh, that doesn't happen with the power lines however, they just get you rings. This is the only stage of Sonic Colors with two gold rings. I want to say it's actually one of the only stages in the series. I think Sonic CD had a stage. I think it was one of Collision Chaos's apps. Was uh, another one that had two gold posts, but that's about it. And that's how you collect the extra life this time. See, I was still miles away from getting the S rank. Because you need the red rings, you need all the wisps that are available. But I think you only get like one wisp per zone. Uh, with like one exception, because there's like one extra wisp as opposed to zones. Alright, Tropical Resort at four. This is where we're gonna start reusing areas. So we were here before, I think this this is in Act One. One or two, I don't remember. You have some balloons that you can homing attack off of. They do slow you down, however, so you don't want to keep using it. Sonic has his wall jump. I still find it rather awkward to pull off in this game, just like all, just like all of them. So if there's one thing that Sega, that Sonic Team just can't seem to implement right, it's the freaking wall jump. And that's it, that's the end of the stage. It's like the first, in Sonic Unleash, in the HD version it often just, Sonic just doesn't cling to the wall anyway, and in the SD version he's sort of still, he's still doing his spin jump, which makes it awkward to pull off. In this version, Sonic also doesn't want to stick to the wall. Static capacity. 
capacitor to the maximizing modulationizer. <sighs> I wish I knew what you were saying, little guy, or gal, or whatever you are. Whoa! Oh, man! That was crazy! Oh, I was reconfiguring my handheld into a translator so I can understand this guy. Did you go somewhere? Didn't you see? I absorbed those aliens and got powered up with, like, some kind of wild energy. And after a few seconds, they'd pop out of me. Uh, I find that hard to believe. Huh? Okay, seriously? We need to find Eggman and figure out how catching these aliens fits into whatever heinous plan he's hatching. And wreck that plan, right? Yeah, that's pretty much how we spend our time. Yep, it pretty much is. Okay, so. Eggman is clearly up to something with all of these uh, wisps, these little aliens. Although we don't quite know what that plan is yet. We're not going to find out what that plan is for some time, actually. So here it is. Here's where we really show off all the ricocheting. But you're only given so long to do it. We're not going to be getting the spikes. With, I think that the spikes is probably going to be the last wisp I unlock, really. The Sonic Colors has a fairly non-linear progression system. You still have to go Acts 1 through 6 in order, but in terms of all of the stages, it's sort of non-linear. Like, we have one available here. That will then unlock two locations, which playing those two will then unlock three locations. So it's a fairly non-linear structure. But you still have to do, like, Acts 1 through 6. In a way, it's kind of like Knuckles Chaotix, where the stage was chosen at random, but each one had five acts apiece. Unfortunately, you also got to make sure you, act you can actually aim the laser for the life of you, which I clearly cannot do. Okay, so here's how this is generally going to work, and I... How did that happen? Oh, oh, I, I got a red ring. It's totally intentional. Totally intentional, that's exactly how I was planning on doing that. So, uh, here's how this is pretty much going to work. This playthrough, this is pretty much going to be a double playthrough. The first playthrough is going to be the story. The second playthrough is going to be the red rings and the S ranks. Yep, okay. straight to, I couldn't remember if that was a cutscene or straight to uh, Act 6. So that's how it's going to work. Once we've gone through everything, I'm not sure if I'll do the final area and the final boss since... Now that is the end of the game. I know I didn't do that for Sonic Heroes, but Sonic Heroes also had its own set of cutscenes. Sorry, its own credits when you finish uh, Super Hard Mode and you couldn't do it with Unleashed anyway. In this game, I'll probably just save uh, Terminal Velocity for last. There's no red rings in it, it's just two S ranks and that's it. But the story mode will be the first playthrough, that'll be short and simple, and then we'll get make it a bit longer is when we'll go after all of the red rings and S ranks, because we'll have all of the wisps unlocked. It won't really be probably until around the fourth, around the how many stages are there? Six, if you don't count the last one. So around the fifth one, maybe even the sixth one is when we can start getting the S ranks, because we'll have all of the wisps available. But I still won't necessarily be going after them at that point, because why should I? I'll already have everything else. I still won't have any of the earlier ones. So it's 30 red rings per area, and 7 S ranks. 23, 24, 25... Ah! Not nearly enough aliens! Want us to get more? No, I want you to get me a cheeseburger and a shake! That'll be easier! Cheeseburgers don't run as fast as them little alien varmints! Idiot! Get me more aliens! Y'all want fries with that? Oh! I reckon that hurt a bit. Wait a minute, I need to go over yonder. Sorry. Hmm. Precious little aliens! I'll harness their hyper go on power, and then nothing will stop me. I know I say that every time, but this time, really, nothing will stop me. Boss? What? Sonic! Oh, yeah.
you calling nothing? Huh? He means since the boss said nothing will stop me, and Sonic here is going to stop him, it's like the boss was calling Sonic nothing. Great! I thought nobody would get that. Fine. You're so smart, robot. You take care of this mess. Release the big boy! At least I know he won't screw it up. Hasta la bye bye, sucker! Wait, wait for me. Guess it's time for me to start stopping. Oh, no. All right, it's time for the first boss. I think this thing is called Rotatatron. They're not actually named in the game themselves. In the DS version, it's a different boss fight entirely. It takes three hits to kill this guy with a homing attack. If you hit him with a laser, you kill, you kill him instantly, I think, or it does. Or you might need to homing attack him once. I'm not sure. That is it. That is the boss fight right there. And then I'll always drop a load of rings. That is literally it. Still an easier, still probably a more difficult boss fight than the first boss of Sonic Chaos. Or the first boss of 8-bit Sonic 1, where he just lowers himself and dashes towards you. Which in the Game Gear version, you can just jump up and hit it. There's our first S rank. A and, F, a and S ranks will give you a bunch of lives if you can get these in quick succession. I think that's six lives. Like, I think it just keeps adding up again and again, and then you, there's still the one that's in the, uh, the score. Oh, there you are. Where'd you run off to? I did a little shopping, grabbed a bite to eat, and trashed a giant killer robot. Oh, really? And they've got shopping here, too? This place has everything. Hey, so how's your translator thingy coming along? Uh, I think it's done. It's in binary code, so only I can read it. Okay, ask away. <clears throat> Who are you, and what is happening to your people? Okay, he says his name is Talks a lot, and he's from a faraway soda, and where flowers water them with dances. Yeah, uh, I think your machine still has some bugs. Yeah, I think I can figure this out, though. Okay. He said his name is Yakker. He's from a race of beings called Wisps. Wisps? No, Wisps, with a W. Yeah, I'll just stick with aliens if that's okay with everybody. Oh, sure. So anyway, they're either being used for their magical powers by an evil man, or to make underwear to be worn by Sally. <sighs> Just here, save them, save them, over and over. When I was running around trashing robots, I saw a map that had a couple of interesting places. I think I'll go check them out, and maybe save some aliens. The mouse man said to Wrangle have a piece of this mess. When you consider what we're doing from a robot's point of view, it's actually pretty gruesome. Don't think about it. If you say so. I'm missing an arm. Have you got an arm? No, but really, how much can it matter? I guess it can't matter much. Something tells me that's going to uh, play an important role later on. Alright, we've got two locations unlocked. Which one will I go to? Stay tuned to find out.